Hey Child of God, there are seven reasons why God knows what you're thinking. Number one, God knows what you're thinking regardless of your current geographical or spiritual location. Psalm 139 verse 2 in the New Living Translation. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. Matthew chapter 9 verse 4 in the New Living Translation. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you have such evil thoughts in your heart? Second, God even knows what unbelievers are thinking, but your Heavenly Father is giving them a way out. Matthew chapter 6, verse 32, and the New Living Translation. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father has already met and knows all of their needs. Number three, you cannot continue putting positive thoughts and negative thoughts into the same environment and expect success. Like somebody said years ago, faith and doubt, in fact, I think it was F.F. F. Bosworth, faith and doubt cannot live in the same house. If you're putting the Word of God into your mental thought process, but you're also entertaining negative or ungodly thoughts, I can tell you that you might survive, but it will be difficult for you to thrive and these are any other times. The last part of James chapter 1 verse 8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Luke chapter 11 verse 17 in the New Living Translation. He knew their thoughts, so he said, Any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A family splintered by feuding will fall apart. Number four, you must refocus your thinking on the Word of God. Let me say that again. You must refocus your thinking on the Word of God and His solutions to every problem that you face. You've got to trust God to be God, to deliver you out of, out of every situation, circumstance, and adversity that you're facing. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, and the New Living Translation says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. See, your thoughts will either become a destiny maker or a destiny breaker. So you need to be focusing in the right manner. Number five, you need to make sure that your thoughts are well-pleasing to Him. Psalm 104 verse 34 in the New Living Translation. May all my thoughts be pleasing to Him, for I rejoice in the Lord. May all my thoughts be pleasing to Him. Number six, the only effective way to change your life, to change your attitude, is to change the way you think. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 and the New Living Translation. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. And Romans 12 too in the New Living Translation says, Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Hallelujah. Number seven, let his thoughts be your thoughts. Let his thoughts be your thoughts. Psalm 49 verse 3 in the New Living Translation. For my words are wise and my thoughts are filled with insight. One last scripture, Psalm 51.10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. You need to make sure that you're bringing your thought life up to God's level. See, too many believers try to, to take God and get Him to fit in their environment. But instead, you need to change your environment. You need to elevate your level of thinking. Philippians 4 says, think on these things. Think on the pure, the powerful, and the positive. Think on the things that you've heard Jesus teach. Think on the things that you know to be true. He knows your thought life. And if you want to change the direction in your life, where you're at, the key to it begins right here, what you're thinking. Because what you're thinking will ultimately become what you're speaking. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Child of God, listen to me. You can turn your life around just like that, but you've got to get control of your thought life so that it becomes a destiny maker and not a destiny breaker. Now that's what I call some rich thoughts.